Welcome back to more Motorsports Garage. Unless this is your first time here, then welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button, hit that like button, turn the bell icon on to get notified of every upload. So in the previous video, I did this Master Sword Shifter right here. If you want to watch that, I'll link it in the description. And before you guys even say it, yes, these seats are in terrible shape. I am working on getting new ones. Uh, but in this video, we're going to be installing some door projector lights. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, at least this works on the RSX and a few other vehicles. It works pretty similarly. Uh, if you want to, you could just do a toggle switch to it. And that way you could flip the switch on when you want the door open and show the light on the ground. Either way, I'm going to show you how I do it on the RSX, so I hope you guys enjoy this video. All right, before we get started, I wanted to mention do not leave your doors open for more than five minutes after they're installed uh, because it can actually melt the image because the projector gets pretty hot. You can see right here in this video clip that the image is melted. That's on my old pilot. That's from leaving the doors open for more than five minutes. We were working on it and it just melted the image and it slowly got worse over time. Um, so definitely, if you're working on your car, disconnect the battery or whatever power source it is hooked up to. Uh, so that way you don't melt the image like we did. Try to learn from our mistakes. So uh, we're just gonna go ahead and get into it. I hope you guys enjoy this video. All right, so there are a few things that you're gonna need for this. Obviously, you're gonna need the door projector lights. I'll leave a link in the description for some companies that sell door projector lights. You can actually have custom images put in these. It's really cool. Uh, I have a solder iron here. You can use different methods to connect the wires. I prefer soldering the connections. I will also leave a link in the description for this. My wife actually got this for me for Christmas and uh, it works really, really well. Um, we just need some wire. Now 16 gauge wire to 18 gauge would be okay for this, but I have some 12 gauge wire here that I'm probably going to use because I already have it, might as well. And some electrical tape if you want heat shrink to go over the connections. I recommend that. I don't have any currently, but I like to uh, wrap some electrical tape around it just to keep it from touching. Now you can use some wire strippers like this, which I just basically do it like this, and it strips fine. Now you can also use wire strippers similar to this, which work the best. I will link some similar to this in the description, and this just strips them really easy. So, uh, with that being said, we are installing the Legend of Zelda door projector lights on both the doors, and they will come on when the door is open using the factory system that triggers the light on your dash. It's a really simple way to do this, so let's go over to the car and I'll show you how to do it. So on the back of this right here, there's a wire coming off of that. We're actually gonna run that wire to the negative on the door projector light, and that will be our ground. The positive, we'll just run this to the fuse box to a fuse that has constant power. That way, when the door opens, even without the key in the ignition, the light will come on the ground. When the door closes, this will trigger that to shut the light off. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this panel off back here, have access to that wire, and then we'll tap into it, and. Get it ran over to the door. So to make this just a little easy, we're going to pop this little cover off, undo this Phillips head screw, and we'll pull this out a little bit. And you can see we have access to that wire. Go ahead and pull this up. All right, so we're just gonna disconnect this, pull this inside panel out a little, and now we have access to that wire, so we can tap into this now. All right, we're just gonna peel this back to expose some of the wire, get these cutters in there. And now we have just a little bit of wire exposed. What the heck? There's an armadillo walking through the driveway. I thought it was a dog. normal thing in Texas. So anyways, we're going to loop this ground wire around right here. Then we're going to solder it in. The solder gun works really good. I'll let that cool down for a second. 
Now we're going to go ahead and tape this just like that. Slide that wire loom right over it. Now we can tape all this up so no chance of it grounding out by accident because the wire looms over it and it's electrical tape. All right, now we can just shove this right back through the hole and then we can run the rest of this through the door. All right, so what I like to do with the ground is kind of just tuck it under the carpet here. It's a pretty clean look and it's concealed and out of the way. And then it will run up under the dash to the left and it'll go through the little rubber uh, grommet seal in the door and then we'll feed it through the door. Now that's a lot easier said than done, um, but with a little bit of wiggling, you can definitely get it through there. This is the grommet that I was talking about. We go up behind here. That is the grommet hole right here. It leads to the outside. So basically we're just gonna run that ground up through and into that grommet hole. But to go any further, we have to remove the door panel. I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. There's just this little cover on the inside right there. And it has this little thing you push up on the bottom and pull it out. We have two Phillips head screws right there. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. All right, so right here there's a Phillips head screw and right here there's a Phillips head screw. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. Now once you've removed those two, we're going to go ahead and pop this up. Might have to use a flat head to do it. This one came up pretty simple. There's this little push tab here. Push that tab in and pull the connector out. Now we remove this door handle. It has a little clip here. We just scoot it off to the side a little. Pull that straight out. And then do that. Now the door panel is ready to come out. We just pry it open from the bottom. And it comes out. Now that it's off, we can actually see right there is where this wiring connector is. So you can just see that comes right through like that. So we're going to go ahead and feed that ground wire up into that wiring loom there. And it'll come out on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, I got the wire ran through the grommet and all the way over here where I used a rubber hose for fuel line with a zip tie on the back and a zip tie on the front. That way the wire can slide in and out. Since I don't have any rubber, rubber grommets, this works just as good. Um, so this is that ground that will hook up to this light. The ground will hook up to the ground. And then the positive, since I didn't run a wire through here as well, I do have power windows and locks and this green and white wire right here, um, that's actually a constant power. So I'm gonna tap into that and tap into this. And when I shut the door and open the door, the light will come on accordingly. So we're gonna go ahead and drill the hole in the door panel for this, then we'll get it wired in and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, these kits usually come with a little hole saw, which you can just put in your drill looks just like this and this will allow it to drill right through the plastic door panel we just put it in the drill we're ready to go okay so this is the back side of the door panel the spot i'm going to drill is right here so we're basically just going to find the spot we want and drill straight into it <laughs> All right, now that we've got a nice little hole here, I like to widen it out a little bit with just a carbide bit. Not very much. Now the reason I do that is after we shove these wires in through here, this will shove in, and there are threads it has to work past. It just helps it go in a little bit better. Now you will have to adjust this, so I recommend hooking power up to it with the door panel loosely attached. That way you can get the right adjustment and then put on the back side that locking ring. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that.
right, I think that's just about where I want it. So it looks pretty good. Go ahead and clip everything in. Now I want to show you this button right here. I'm going to push it in and it shuts off. When I lift it out, it comes on. So it's working exactly how it should. And uh, everything's soldered up and electrical taped extensively. So this side looks good. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Probably not on camera just because this takes quite a while to record. So I'm going to go ahead and do it and we'll see how the final product looks. I hope you guys are enjoying this video. All right, here it is. Both sides are done. And it looks absolutely awesome. Very bright. And as you can see, I did this driver's side door as well. Now I did not do the door jams yet. I don't have enough time tonight to do the door jam uh, on either side, but I will get to them. It's just kind of one thing at a time right now. But uh, yeah, both sides are done. And the door itself looks really good. So. Next is to do the door jams. I need to get new seats and probably detail this thing because it's pretty dirty uh, inside. But um, yeah, it's pretty simple for this. Now I'll show you on my wife's MDX because sometimes the vehicle has lights in the door from the factory. So let me show you real quick. Like on hers has lights from the factory. So you can drill right next to that and just pop the door panel open, expose those wires, solder them together, tape it up, and it wouldn't take very long for the install at all. So if you have a vehicle with door lights in it, then you uh, you basically got it made. Very little effort to get those in. Um, but yeah, the Legend of Zelda theme is definitely coming along nice. Got the Master Sword shifter. We got the hood glowing. Now I'm still waiting for my good buddy Joe to finish up the emblems for the front and rear, but it will have emblems eventually. Um, and we've got the door lights now. Now I need to get this thing sprayed the gloss white with the pearl gold. Uh, me and GT Performance have been talking back and forth and we're just trying to find a time that works and when I have enough funds to go all the way there and back, because as you know, fuel prices are crazy. So it is about a six and a half hour drive round trip, which isn't a big deal because it's still in Texas, but the problem is it's going to take a few days, so I have to have a hotel room, money for all that. So it's going to take a minute, but I'm definitely trying to get that rolling. Um, but yeah, it's definitely coming along for sure. I really like how this car is turning out. 
Now the next video that will be coming out will be this rose gold duplicolor high performance wheel coating. And uh, we're gonna paint on my wife's wheels because she wants some rose gold stuff. So we're gonna do the wheels and a couple of other things and make her car a little bit more custom. Also wanted to show you this real quick. I got cool more motorsports uh, business cards. That way I can just hand them out to people at car meets and stuff like that. And you can scan the QR code to uh, subscribe to the channel. And also on the other side, it's for Texas Honda Channel. Has all the Texas Honda Channel information as well. So if I see you out in public, just ask me for a business card and I can give you some, um, you know, because I carry them around with me now. It's just an easier way to tell people about the channel. I'm going to try to promote the channel more. We're almost to 100K subscribers. Praise God, that's amazing. Um, we're so close, so please continue to share the videos around. It really does help the channel grow when you hit that like button because it triggers the algorithm in saying, hey, people like this, so we should definitely bump it up in their recommendeds. So I'd greatly appreciate it if you guys hit that like button, dropped a comment, let me know what you guys think of the cool Legend of Zelda theme. At least I may be biased because I love Legend of Zelda, so I think it's a pretty cool thing. My wife said I should rename my channel to Nerdy Mechanic, but uh, it's already taken. Darn. Oh well. But uh, yeah, that's basically it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you got something out of it, please let me know. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. So I'm going to go ahead and get off here. And I'll see you guys in the next one. And as I like to say, Unless they say stay awesome. Jesus loves you.